then over here we were talking in the the airframe shop about what airframe mechanics do and you'll notice they're working on that project that i showed you okay so each and every one of them are now building that project okay. uh, we have to show them how to rivet how to cut metal how to clean metal so we have different projects. Uh, we have one that's being put together as two plates with multiple styles of rivet. So they get to see how each one goes in. They also get to learn to use squeeze riveters. Okay? Also rivet guns. And we also have handheld squeeze rivets. Mostly for small rivets. But they have to utilize all the tooling to understand how this job works. Right. And you'll notice that these gentlemen are in the middle of making the patches. So their first step is to actually make the beam itself. Uh -huh. Then we get to cut it in half, and they have to put it back together again, making their patch repair. Oh, okay. So they are not only just building a rib for an airplane, but they are also learning that if that rib gets damaged, how to repair that. Okay. okay. Everything is done for manuals and books that the FAA puts out for sure um, and we can show them every step of the way rivet sizing placement so it's just a good experience on not only building but also repair awesome. that's so cool now you have to excuse our partner in the next section we're going to go into but i'll show you some tooling over there mitsubishi was so nice to us that they gave us a lot of tooling okay and we are still trying to go through all this tooling yeah. And hopefully we can give some of this, you know, use it all, to other parts of Big Ben, which I think is awesome. Yeah, for sure. So as you can tell, we have some of the right here. Drill presses, cutters, sanders. These wonderful units are what we call COWS. Okay. Which stands for Computer on Wheels. Okay. So each student when we're working things, our computer systems are set up with all the manuals that we have. Oh, wow. So instead of having to come and sit in front of paper, right. which we've had for many years, we have them all downloaded onto the computers now. That is so, so cool. it kind of brings the new technology into sure. what they're going to find in the market out there. Yeah. Uh, when they're working, you're going to be working with computers more than they are paper. So this gives them the ability to say, I know how to do this. Yeah. So these computers can be taken to their projects, they can punch up any aircraft, engine or propeller, carburetors, magnetos, and they'll show them the maintenance manual on how to inspect and repair. That's awesome. That is so cool. And we have eight of these, and these do help a lot for training students. For sure. Yeah. Okay? Uh, right behind us we have the NDT room. Now NDT stands for non-destructive testing. What that means is we're actually inspecting parts without causing damage to them okay. with either a penetrant that gets into cracks, and then when you put a developer, it pulls that out so we can see cracks. Okay. okay. And there are two different styles of penetrant inspection. We have what they call die penetrant, okay. which is basically the die that you put on and you clean it off, uh -huh. and then you put what they call a developer. Okay. The developer actually will pull the die out of the cracks okay. when it gets in there. And when that happens under a black light, you can see cracks. Yeah. So it shows an indication. In the back, we have what they call a magnetic particle. The magnetic particle is similar that you would still use a developer, but you don't have to use a die. Okay. And what ends up happening is you put a magnetic surge through that part. Okay. And the stuff that you're using actually has floating metal in it. Okay. So when you spray it on, any crack, in a, like in a magnet, you have a negative and a positive. So when the pieces get in there, they're kind of trapped in the crack. Once again, under a black light, you can see this. So on steel parts, metal parts, we use those. On aluminum or non-ferrous parts, we use titanium. Okay. So this is something they're going to be doing a lot in the aviation industry, so this is part of us teaching them how to do that. Okay. And this is part of our clutter, because these toolboxes that you see in here were all given to us by Mitsubishi. Okay. So we're trying to get to the point where we can actually issue a toolbox to a student. Okay. For those that can't afford their tools, as we know, tools are very expensive. Right. Yeah. So now that we have tools that we can actually lend students while they're here, they don't have to 
quickly go out and buy them to get through the course. Now they'll be able to do their job to learn, and then they can get their tools before they graduate. So this was a great deal for us, for sure. And then of course the rest of our clutter. Once again, all this stuff was given to us by Mitsubishi also. Okay. And that was just wonderful. Yeah. And excuse the mess, but like I said, we're still trying to go through this. For sure. But this is where they do a lot of their cutting, grinding, sanding, um, metal, metal bending, metal shears. Once we get it cleaned up, you'll see better. Uh, but this is where they're going to be building those projects that they're having. Okay. This is where they're going to bend the metal, cut the metal, shave the metal, right. drill holes in it. All that's done with this equipment. That's awesome. Okay? Cool. We have our tool room back here uh, that we're still trying to put together now that we've got all this wonderful stuff. <laughs> As you can tell, we're starting to put up shelves and uh, put parts in them. I guess the nice part about that is this equipment that we got from Mitsubishi is all modern. Okay. So it's really, once again, nice because it's not really affordable for the college to go out buy new tools every day. Right, right. Well, what they have given us, so even all the accessories they gave us, we can actually show students what they were using. Okay. And modern equipment, right. modern testing, modern supplies. If nothing else, we may not use it, but it's great to show the students so they can actually see what so they're going to be looking at when they're talking to you. Okay. So it's a great learning experience for that. For sure, for sure. Anyway, that's our shop right here. Awesome. Uh, we can take a look at a few of the airplanes. Okay. So you got? Sure. You saw the King Air that we have. Yeah. Twin engine aircraft. We have single engine airplanes. Okay. We actually have uh, jet aircraft. going on but a lot of students do come in saying do we work on helicopters well, yes we do yeah. and we do have it we have actually had that to where it start the engines and you can't hover it but we can start it and run it on the ground okay so you still get everything moving and you get to see what's going on with it. for sure now on our flight line you can see that we have like i said turbine engines that's going to be their next project okay when they finish this one they have to go out and remove that engine off of that aircraft and then put it back on again. Okay. Which shows them how to remove and install a turbine engine. For sure. And then of course, we have our 727 down at the other side. Uh, we're hoping in time, once things are cleared out, we'll be bringing that up here on our ramp too. That is also one that is fully operational. We can run the APU, we can run the engines, hydraulics. Everything works on that aircraft. So it is a fabulous thing for the students to get on and we can show them a modern aircraft cockpit, operation, circuit breakers, flight controls, everything operates. So we are down there running those engines and we've actually taxied that airplane a few times too. So, so that is really an exciting time because we can fit most of the students on that airplane <laughs> right? um, and show them around the airport. We haven't done that in a while with COVID, we have to be a little careful, but yeah. it is something we've done in the past. That's and so cool. it is exciting. For yeah. yeah, for sure. So these are just some of the airplanes we work on. And as Dan was explaining, our, our hangar space is limited, so we have to bring the airplanes in in a planned time to work on each and every one of them, depending on what's going on at the time. But it all works. Yeah. And we'll make it work. It'll be great. But we do have single engine, we have dual engine, we have turbine. So everything you would find in the field, you're going to find here. That's so cool. And they'll be able to go through all those processes. For sure. 